What's up friends, welcome back to the channel for another movie reaction. Very excited for today's, which is Full Metal Jacket. We've been watching a lot of war movies lately, whether they're serious or comedies. And so this is definitely fitting the theme of the past couple of videos over the past couple of weeks. And so I'm really excited to get into this one because I've heard this one brought up a lot. And obviously it's directed by Stanley Kubrick, who's one of the most celebrated directors ever. And from his filmography, I have I've seen a few of his like The Shining 2001 both of those being phenomenal movies especially The Shining one of my favorite horror movies for sure so really excited to see his direction in this and I don't really know much about it beyond that I think one scene I recognize or have seen from this out of context is some guy yelling at one of the soldiers in a room and so other than that i don't think i know anything else from it but we'll see as i watch if i recognize anything else but i hope you guys are excited to watch along with me and if you'd like to watch along with me for the entire length of the movie definitely check out my patreon link in the description that's where you can find that and obviously you'll need your own copy of the movie to watch along with me but you'll also find all the other full-length reactions i've done for the channel there as well and if by the end of the video you enjoyed it definitely consider leaving a thumbs up helps the video reach a lot more people helps the channel out so i appreciate all of you guys who do that but without further ado i'm excited to go ahead and get into full metal jacket i'm really interested to see stanley kubrick's take on a war movie because he's a very artistically motivated director and he goes to great lengths to get certain shots and things like that and so i'm sure cinematically or from a cinematography standpoint this is going to be a very very impressive movie. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. Do you maggots understand that? <laughs> well, yep, I guess we're already getting into the scene I recognize. Here you are all equally worthless, and my orders are to weed out all non-hackers who do not pack the gear to serve in my beloved corps. Do you maggots understand that? Whoever this guy is is given a great performance so far, and I absolutely love this opening shot. Fantastic camera work already. I got your name! I got your ass! You will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. Oh, man, I loved that camera angle. Just putting us in the eyes of the soldier. Now let me see your war face. Ah! You didn't convince me. Let me see your real war face. Ah! You don't scare me. Work on it. Oh, my gosh. This is an incredible opening scene. I love this. This guy's acting is so captivating and entertaining. Would hate to be one of the soldiers, though. Looks to me like the best part of you ran down to crack your mama's ass and ended up as a brown stain on the mattress. I think you've been cheated. <laughs> this guy's insult game is next level. Holy crap. You're so ugly you could be a modern art masterpiece. What's your name, fat body? Sir Leonard Lawrence, sir. That's not Vincent D'Onofrio, is it? Is that the kingpin himself? I can't hear you. Sounds off like you've got a pair. Sir, yes, sir. That's enough. Get on your feet. Oh, man. This looks like an utter hell that they're living in right now. Really an introduction, though, because now I'm just going to be terrified of this guy for the rest of the movie. I like this. This is a catchy song. Or chant. It's not really a song. Whoa! Are you serious? Kubrick, you visual master. That shot is gorgeous. You want to be different? Sir, no, sir! What side was that, Private Pile? Sir, left side, sir! Are you sure, Private Pile? Sir, yes, sir! My gosh, this is brutal. Is this movie just gonna be two hours of this guy berating all his men? Oh, my gosh. oh man, my guy's being humiliated. At least we know he rises up in Hell's Kitchen later on. My rifle and myself are defenders of my country. We are the masters of our enemy. We are the same. Love that shot too, right there. Kubrick just gets it, man. Every single shot of his is just so well thought out. Good night, ladies. Good night, sir. Hit it, sweetheart. Sir, aye, aye, sir. Right. 
<laughs> oh man, I like how they don't even give us a break. As soon as he says goodnight, we're just immediately back into action in the next day. I can imagine the intention for that is just to kind of continually put strain on yourself like you would feel if you're a soldier in that situation by not giving you any chance to breathe. All right, one swing and deck private just for tone gonna graduate until they can get this obstacle down to less than 10 seconds. Man, the pacing of this movie is so frantic and so fast so far. As soon as one scene has any dip in, like, intensity, it immediately goes into the height of the next. Next two privates, quickly! <laughs> See, like, that moment right there, as soon as that guy gets knocked down in the circle, immediately onto the next scene with people running. It's definitely an effective way of keeping your attention constantly. Man, I hope Pyle gets a good character arc. He's struggling so far. He's just getting absolutely broken mentally at every turn. Move it! I'm gonna rip your balls off so you cannot contaminate the rest of the world! <laughs> oh my gosh. It must have taken so much energy for this guy to do this movie. He's just at 110% for every moment of the movie so far. Private Joker is your new squad leader, and you will bunk with him. Private Joker is silly and he's ignorant, but he's got guts, and guts is enough. Here we go, now we got a little bit of a plot move in here, with Joker and Pyle teaming up. Operating rod handle. Operating rod guide. The left one. The pacing is still so unbelievably fast, in a good way, like, I'm really enjoying it, but as soon as it switches to Joker being kind of in the lead, so much more calm. Oh, now he's killing it. Let's go, pile. Dude's as much of a soldier as the rest of them now. If your killer instincts are not clean, you will hesitate at the moment of truth. You will become dead, Marines. Marines are not allowed to die without permission. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. I love that. Man, I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's the pacing and just the non-stop intensity, but I'm like so stressed watching this and it's not necessarily like stressful or intense footage. It's just constantly in your face. You feel like you're actually there with them. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Ask him if he is mighty cold. <laughs> what the I never know what's going to come out of this dude's mouth. It always surprises me, though. Good for you! Good for you! Good for me! Good for me! Man, this is fascinating so far. It's like every single scene of the movie so far has been its own unique moment, completely separate from everything else, but the way it's edited and compiled together, it just flows naturally. It's very, very impressive on the post-production side. It's Joe in the barracks, private pile. Sir, no, sir! Oh, this guy's gonna get destroyed for the donut. Donut does look good, though. Can't say I blame him. Private pile has dishonored himself and dishonored the platoon. You people have not given private pile the proper motivation. Oh, jeez. It's the collective punishment now. This is the classic teacher move. They're paying for it. You eat it. Exercise. One. Excellent shot, man. Dude is sticking out like a sore thumb in this environment. This is definitely completely out of his element. What? Is someone gonna try and bash his head in? Somebody might have done too many push-ups for my guy Pyle. Wait, what? Is everybody getting in on something? Oh gosh, dude, this is brutal. Oh man, poor guy. 
Just taking a hit from everybody in there. Some haunting music during that sequence as well. That's certainly gonna motivate him though, if nothing else has. Kill! 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 I can't hear you! Kill! 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 Still can't hear you! Kill! 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 Ooh, dang man, that's a rough shot right there. Looks like he's just being broken down completely. Do any of you people know where these individuals learned how to shoot? Sir! In the Marines, sir! Those individuals showed what one motivated Marine and his rifle can do. Whoa, wait a second. What does that editing and dialogue supposed to signify? They were just talking about the person who assassinated Kennedy, and then it cuts to Vincent D'Onofrio with a freaking evil look on his face. Is he going to be turned into a freaking killer by the end of this? Oil. So that your action is beautiful. Smooth, Charlie. Dang, yeah, he's definitely changing as a character. I mentioned earlier that hopefully he got a character arc, but this seems to be going the opposite direction that I was hoping for. Today, you people are no longer maggots. <laughs> what, what a nice compliment for that drill sergeant, though. That is quite high praise. Homer Pyle. Homer Pyle! Sir, yes, sir! All 300 infantry, you made it! Shoot, his look there has me so on edge. He lost that little innocent smile that he had in the other scenes at the beginning of the movie. Definitely turned him into what looks like a killer. Something's about to go down. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with this man? Dude looks like he's absolutely lost it. 7.62 millimeter full metal jacket. Oh shoot, title drop. Is this dude planning on shooting up all the soldiers? Surely not, right? This is my rifle! There are many like it, but this one is mine! It is my life! Get back in your bunks! Oh gosh, man, I'm so freaking tense right now. Something terrible is about to happen, I know it. What is your major malfunction, numbnuts? Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention when you were a child? No, he actually did shoot him. I cannot believe this. This is not the direction I thought this movie was going to go. I thought this was just your typical war movie. Okay, my gosh, dude. What is happening right now? Kubrick has gone full Kubrick. I was worried something was going to happen, and so him killing the drill sergeant wasn't as crazy of a shock. It was still super shocking and mind-blowing, but I did not expect one bit that our main character so far was just going to kill himself right after. Me so horny. You keep lying. Me love you a long time. <laughs> Wait, is that where that line comes from originally? I've heard people say that before, but did that originate in this movie and then everyone else parodied it? What the heck? I have no idea what to expect from this movie anymore. It goes immediately from Pyle killing himself in that super intense scene to an almost over the top scene in Vietnam. That was a great shot right there. I really loved that. Oh man, what a shot. That explosion looked practical. I'm going to assume it was, but that was crazy. It's very interesting and I don't know if this was intentional or if this is just how I'm feeling so far about it, but like this little battle right here is way less intense than the beginning with the drill sergeant for some reason. I don't know if it was just because how that beginning was edited or the pacing, how intense that beginning was definitely made this a lot less intense than it may have been otherwise. I, I want you to get straight up to Fubai. Captain January will need all his people. Yes, sir. You will take off that damn button. How's it gonna look if you get killed wearing a peace symbol? 
man, it feels like I'm almost watching a completely different movie right now because the differences between the beginning and this section of the movie is so stark. I've done got me 157 dead goops killed. I can just shoot women, children. You just don't lead them so much. <laughs> Did Kubrick just make this movie with the intention of showing all the awful aspects and side effects of a war? It feels like it's shining a light on all the terrible aspects of it. Green, what is that button on your body armor? A peace symbol, sir. What is that you've got written on your helmet? Born to kill, sir. You write born to kill on your helmet and you wear a peace button. What's that supposed to be? Some kind of sick joke? My first thought about that is that it's Kubrick's way of saying that the military is itself is kind of a contradiction because the purpose of fighting the wars would you would think to be to get peace but you achieve that by killing other people and like we've already seen people are enjoying the killing more than the goal I don't know if that was his intention though but it's definitely presenting an interesting contrast hey photographer you want to take a good picture this is my bro wait is that gonna be a body Oh gosh, there was a dead body next to him the whole time. And they were all just hanging out like normal. Jeez, that's some heavy stuff. These people we wasted here today are the finest human beings we will ever know. After we rotate back to the world, we're gonna miss not having anyone around who's worth shooting. Well, Kubrick's certainly covering his bases by showing pretty much every possible mental state a soldier could have with all these different characters. It's very interesting to see all these different ideologies come forth. Whoa, dang, that was pretty tense. That guy fell down in front of him. What happened to him? Gosh, did he get hit with debris or something? Dang, that's terrible, man. Just walking normally and all of a sudden you're dead. Oh man, I love this shot. This is amazing. Just such amazing depth in that frame. And I like that it's just one take following him up through the street with the fear of somebody maybe being there. I like that also. I think that's the first time that the camera has really been more handheld than kind of locked off and steady. And this is... Shoot! Man got popped immediately. But I was gonna say, this is like the first kind of uneasy or uncertain situation, and so it makes sense to go for that cinematic choice. Dang, they absolutely lit that building up. Temperify. We're mean marines, sir. A <laughs> nice camera move, I like it. Stanley Kubrick always comes up with very interesting, captivating angles. Well, at least they died for a good cause. What cause was that? Freedom? Flush out your head, you new guy. You think we waste gooks for freedom? This is a slaughter. It's a pretty heavy phrase. I'm still like almost trying to adjust to commenting on this half of the movie because I was so like taken aback and just interested in that first half, the pacing and everything. This is very different. It's not bad or anything. It's just kind of jarring the change that went on after Pyle killed himself. When we're in White City, it's like a war. But what I thought a war was, you know, was supposed to be, there's the enemy, kill him. And maybe that phrase right there that he said about coming out here expecting a certain thing about war, maybe that's why the first half of the movie was done the way it was and it makes you think like when you get to the war part that it's going to be just as intense or fast paced. But when you actually get out there, it's not what you would think. And if that was the intention of Kubrick, that's very effective and genius filmmaking. We're heading over that way. Hey, Ball's gonna go over there and see, can he find a way through? Gosh, because of the things that have happened in the other points of the movie in an open field, I'm terrified for him running out there right now. Oh no. 
Dang it, dude. I, I mean, at least it was a leg shot. Hopefully he won't die from that. I've requested tank support. We're gonna sit tight till it comes. You can't wait that long. I've seen this before. That sniper's just trying to suck us in one at a time. Oh, gosh, man. He's just getting annihilated out there. The effects on this for its time are insane. This is some amazing quality filmmaking. Oh gosh, dude, that zoom. Now they've lost two people. Interesting that he's chosen to do slow-mo in those moments when they get shot. The way this movie's pacing is going, it feels like it's almost told in separate acts. Like the drill sergeant and all that stuff there was act one, and then the initial entrance into the war was act two, and it feels like now we're in an act three. Man, some of these shots are amazing. And because of the way these camera movements are done in big sweeping motions, it makes me believe like they're doing all of this on a gigantic like real life set. And it's not just some sort of sound stage with green screen and stuff. Murphy, this is cowboy over. Oh no, he's getting taken out. Freak, dude, cowboy's down. Whoever that sniper is, he is racking up a massive body count with these guys. And that looked like a pretty lethal shot, too. I don't think he's getting out of here. Dude, the lighting and the colors of this scene are just so perfect. This is just an absolute feast for the eyes right now. I knew coming in that the cinematography of this from a Kubrick film was going to be just next level and it definitely has not disappointed in that department. Oh, he's got a clean shot. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What? It's a girl? That was not what I was expecting. I'd only seen men so far up throughout this movie. Oh gosh, man, she got absolutely lit up right there. She is 100% dead. Yo, what's up? We got the sniper. And this whole scene in this little abandoned town, the lighting has just been so, so good. My left taker and my heartbreaker. <laughs> That's kind of interesting now that I think about it that the sniper was a woman and earlier when Joker was talking to that guy who was just slaughtering people in the fields he was asking him how he could ever kill a woman but now context definitely would change that question and I'm sure that that was intentional directing and storytelling to kind of paint this one picture and then to change the audience's mind later on. If you want to waste her. Go on, waste her. Oh man, this is tense with the music and with her just saying shoot me over and over. My heart's racing. Wow, man, what a scene, what a moment. That was some um, pure art as far as filmmaking goes right there. Definitely a massive change in Joker's character. So interesting how he's the one with the helmet that says born to kill, and yet his kill was the hardest of anyone's in the movie. I'm not sure what the significance of that scene is just beyond his own character development. Maybe it's saying that if you're in war long enough that you will change and become a part of it just like everybody else I am so happy that I am alive I'm in a world of yes but I am alive and I am not afraid now that dialogue is quite interesting because it tells me that after that experience he feels more satisfied being out there in the war is it really going to end right there 
Wow, man. Holy cow. I think that's a fantastic point to end the movie. Man, what an experience. That was completely different than what I was going to expect, partly because the first half of the movie was so different and so the beginning of the movie took me completely off guard and so I was just kind of getting dragged along by the movie and then it switched gears for that second half and kind of took on a little bit more of a traditional war format although the filmmaking was far from traditional it was just top notch so good and I mean love this closing track and I guess if you take significance from the lyrics and apply it to the movie maybe you can say that the war itself kind of took all the soldiers and painted them black how if you go out and get involved in that space then you just become a part of it just like everybody else but that could just be me trying to reach and draw conclusions from something and just trying to give meaning but man there were some phenomenal moments in this movie and some of the phrases that came up, like I mentioned throughout, I don't know if this movie was the origin of them, but if it was, there were a lot of pop culture phrases and things I've heard used before that I did not realize all came from this film. But for its time period, this movie for sure I can imagine was just completely groundbreaking. It had a lot of effects and moments and things that reminded me of the just feeling of being awestruck that I had in Saving Private Ryan and this movie was like 20 years or whatever earlier so my goodness man what an achievement okay so first off it's 1987 that the movie came out just looking at it now for some reason I thought this came out like mid to late 70s but it did come out a lot later than I expected but still even for that time period Period. just so amazing what Kubrick was able to pull off with this film and with how fast paced the first half was and even the second half wasn't necessarily slow paced it was covering so much ground and so many scenes and set pieces that it would have just taken so much effort and collaboration from everybody to pull off something like this and i'm not sure why war movies always seem to just be such a great showcase for the potential of every aspect of filmmaking and just being like at the peak of so many things like practical effects but they always good ones always just seem to amaze me and seem to do them so well and as someone who's never been in the army or the military or the marines or anything like that I feel like the first half of this movie is the closest depiction that a movie could give me of someone's life in basic training or boot camp or whatever it may be just because of how the pacing and the editing and just the acting made it feel so stressful as a viewer like I never had a moment to breathe until Heil pulled that trigger and we went over to Vietnam there wasn't a second that Kubrick took off from for kind of taking his viewers on a journey in that first half so definitely loved the experience it gave me there and then contrasting that with the second half of the movie I feel like for the first little bit once we'd shifted over to following Joker into the middle of everything that was going on I feel like it was a little bit jarring at first for me and I was kind of trying to grasp where the direction of the movie was going but once we'd kind of gotten into that first skirmish and then especially when we got into that that last abandoned town kind of slow building battle just with that one sniper I feel like I really really loved the experience I got from that part of the movie as well and I feel like I have to separate the two because they're so different in style and storytelling but they're both very very well done and I don't know if all the interpretations of character development and meanings beyond the frames were correct that I gathered from it. If they were or if they weren't, as always, let me know. That's why I enjoy doing these videos is because we can always have a discussion and I always learn very quickly if I was right or if I was wrong about something, but I feel like it was a great kind of more honest take on warfare and how it changes people 
and how it's not always done with the best motivations and how both sides don't necessarily have the best people fighting the war. I didn't really know any other actors besides Vincent D'Onofrio, but I feel like everyone did a really, really great job. I recognized Matthew Modine's name at the end, who I assume played Joker. I don't remember what I know him from, but he gave a great performance, especially since he kind of became the main character, the one who was carrying us throughout the film. I think he was definitely the right character for an audience member like myself to kind of follow throughout because it seemed like he was going through the most inner turmoil and even outwardly manifested with the peace sign and then the born to kill written on his helmet just a walking contradiction pretty much to quote taxi driver but i don't think anyone did a better job in this film in acting than the drill sergeant who i mistakenly was calling captain in the beginning but my goodness man he was just reading off lines like crazy for whatever it was 30 minutes or more straight he was just non-stop high intensity and it must have just been exhausting for him to act that part but it was so captivating to watch and i was just completely gripped every time he was in a scene in the beginning i don't really know if i've seen him in anything else but i mean if this was any indication of his acting ability i'm sure he's had a decent acting career and i mean the direction of this movie i feel like i've already said a bunch about the quality of it but this just adds another great great movie to Kubrick's filmography and so I definitely need to get around to checking out the rest of his films because now this being the third one I've seen adding on to the list of 2001 and The Shining this man seems incapable of making a bad movie and so I'm sure the rest of his movies are just equally enjoyable and kind of an intoxicating experience and so I hope you guys really enjoyed watching along with me for this one and definitely look forward to interacting with you all in the comments definitely a lot to talk about or discuss about this one especially for people who were kind of either alive during the Vietnam War or when this came out I'd love to hear your perspective because I don't fully understand necessarily all the cultural or political implications of certain stories that came out before I was born and so I always appreciate those takes and it definitely helps me kind of understand maybe more how these movies were groundbreaking for their time and so I look forward to all of your thoughts and insights but if you guys did enjoy the video definitely consider leaving a thumbs up that definitely helps the video reach a lot more people and helps the channel out so I appreciate all of you guys for your support it means a lot and as always if you'd like to watch along with me for the entire runtime definitely check out my patreon link in the description that's where you can find my full length reaction to this obviously you'll need your own copy of the movie to watch along but you'll also find all of my other full length reactions from the channel there as well but i look forward to seeing you guys all in the next video and until then peace you maggots